the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat welcome 30 new stations to their network tonight as they present Fibber McGee and Molly with songs by the petite and glamorous Martha Tilton, the top-ranking King's Men, and the music of Billy Mills. The show, written by Don Quinn, opens with I Am Not In The Mood. great to have Fibber and Molly back again, isn't it? They're all tanned and rested after their vacations, and I'm sure they have lots of good fun in store for your Tuesday evenings from now on. Our sponsors, the makers of Johnson's Wax Products, would like to join all of you in giving them a royal welcome. Here's to Fibber and Molly and Don Quinn, the writer, and all the members of this fine cast of performers. May they live long and happily, and may they continue to be your friends and your favorite radio program. And may I thank all of you for our sponsors, because after all, it's your continued and enthusiastic loyalty to Johnson Wax products that has made this whole affair so successful. It's a good thing to remember, by the way, that whenever you buy any Johnson's Wax product, you're buying the best, and you're sure of complete satisfaction. <laughs> good things, even vacations, must come to an end. And a good thing, too, because a bank account is a good thing, too. And two people we know were coming to the end of that, too. <laughs> and here, just arriving home at 79 Wistful Vista, we find, for the first time in 13 weeks, those travel-weary, train-tired, ship-shapeless, map-happy homecomers, Fibber McGee and Molly. Heavenly days. Isn't it wonderful to be home again, McGee? Ah, uh, home. A four-letter word meaning no tipping. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait to see everybody. Tell them about Alaska and the big bear I shot. I'll knock them dead. My, doesn't the house look good? Yeah. Uncle Dennis must have taken wonderful care of it whilst we were gone. Yeah? I'll bet he's got the house full of flies. Why, it's too late in the year for flies. Not for bar flies. <laughs> I wonder if he's home. Well, I'll see. You, Uncle Dennis, it's Molly and Fibber, we're home. You, Uncle Dennis. Maybe he's out. He may be away, but he ain't out. <laughs> that guy can hold more than McGee. any... McGee. Now, will you please stop talking that way about me, Uncle Dennis? He's every inch a gentleman. He is? Remind me to measure him next time he falls down. <laughs> well, I'll have to admit he's got everything in pretty good order around here. Ah, oh, boy. Let me sit down in my old easy chair a minute. There you are. Ah, paw shot a bar. <laughs> Thank goodness we only have to take one vacation a year. <laughs> sure tires you out, don't it? <laughs> yes, but it's been a wonderful trip. You've learned all about salmon fishing, bear hunting, and underwater photography. Huh? What do you mean, underwater photography? You mean it was accidental when you fell out of the canoe with a movie camera? <laughs> oh, dear. Look out the window and see who it is, McGee. Oh, it's Mrs. Uppington. Come in, Uppy. Ah, <laughs> uh, how do you do, Abigail? My, it's nice to see you again. Ah, uh, how do you do, my dear? And Mr. McGee. Hi, Uppy. <laughs> I'm glad to see even you. <laughs> How's the world been treating you? Seldom? <laughs> Had 
Have you had a nice summer, Abigail? Oh, delightful, Miss McGee, simply delightful. I've spent the summer singing for the boys in the army camp. Ah. Oh, but tell me, where have you been and what have you been doing? Well, sir, Uppy, we drove to Seattle and took a boat to Alaska. Wonderful country, too. It's the... Oh, my, how those soldiers did appreciate my singing. I was on the program with another lady singer, you know, and they simply wouldn't let me leave the platform. <laughs> they kept shouting, more, more, give us more. Yeah. Oh, well, that must have made the other singer feel fine. Who was she? Uh, Grace Moore, I believe. <laughs> Well, let me tell you about Alaska, Uppy. It's a beautiful country. You ain't seen anything till you've seen the first rays of the Arctic sun glinting on the icy waters of Ketchikan Creek with the... Oh, you must tell me all about it, Mr. McGee. <laughs> Sometime. But now I simply must be going. I must let nothing interfere with my work for the boys. Oh, did I ever show you the lovely letter of appreciation I received from the White House for my work in a previous national emergency? Yes, you did, Abigail. And I must say it was real thoughtful of President Lincoln to do it. (laughs) Oh, yes, indeed it was. I beg your pardon. It was President Wilson. Goodbye. Wow. If I'd have been you, Molly, I wouldn't have been quite so... I almost forgot. Welcome home. Folks, we're happy to welcome to our show tonight that sensational young songstress, Martha Tilton. Martha? You will shout when it hits you, yes, indeed. You will shout when it hits you, yes, indeed. When the spirit moves you, you shout hallelujah. Oh, you holler, you holler, yes, indeed. Can you play sweet music? Yes, indeed. I mean that really sweet music. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It's sweet as sugar candy. Yes, indeed. Can you play hard music? Yes, indeed. I mean that extra hard music. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It's harder than a blacksmith's apron. Yes, indeed. When the band starts playing, that is all you need. And you find yourself swaying. Yes, indeed. When the boys start swinging and forget to read, you will find yourself singing. Yes, indeed, you will shout when it hits you. Yes, indeed, you will shout when it hits you. Yes, indeed, when the spirit starts to move you, you'll be shouting hallelujah. Oh, you'll holler, yes, indeed. Oh, you'll holler, yes, you'll holler. Well, you'll have to admit, McGee, Uncle Dennis has kept the house in apple pie order. He would. He knows I don't like apple pie. (laughs) Is he home? Yes, he's taking a nap. What's that? I told you. Uncle Dennis is taking a nap. Yeah, but what's that noise? It's a woodpecker. He sleeps like a log. (laughs) Yes, indeed. (laughs) By the way, I wonder if that taxidermist in Seattle has sent me that bearskin yet. Oh, it's too soon, dearie. Takes a little time to cure it, you know. Not when I shoot them. When McGee draws a beat on them, bang. They're cured of whatever troubles they ever had. Come in. Well, well, well. Billy Mill. Hello, Billy. My, it's nice to see you again. Hello, kids. Welcome home. Thanks, Billy. And what kind of a summer did you have? Swell, babe. Very groovy. (laughs) You mean 
and gravy. No, groovy. In the groove. Oh. <laughs> Have you the same bunch of nice boys in your band this year, Billy? Yeah, all but my scribble player. Had to let him go. Why, Bill? You know what a scribble is? No. Neither did he, neither did I, so I had to let him go. <laughs> Well, we went up to Alaska, Billy. Great country, too. Yeah, I've heard of it. Up that way, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you ought to run up there sometime, Billy. Boy, if you could ever get a load of the first rays of the Arctic sun glinting on the icy waters of Ketchikan Creek. Ah, Alaska. Say, maybe my secretary would know what a scribble is. Alaska. I'll ask him myself. See you later, babe. So long, <laughs> Alaska myself. If that ain't the worst pun... Well, he couldn't help it. Uh... He just reads what's rotten. <laughs> you mean written. I know what I mean. <laughs> All the time we have... Oh, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Harlow. Welcome home. Or no, you're supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome home. Have a nice trip. Simply grand, Mr. Wilcox. Did you know we went to Alaska? Yes, I heard about it. Have fun? I'll say. Paul shot a bar. He did? Yes, sir. Gee. Seven feet, three inches from Beezer to Bustle, too. <laughs> ah, that's a great country, Harlow. If you could ever see the first rays of the Arctic sun glinting on the icy waters of Ketchikan... Coast. I had a great time myself this summer, right here in Wistful Vista. You did? Yeah. Boy, if you could only see the beauty as I do, in the first rays of the wistful vista sunshine, glinting on the lovely surface of a freshly glow-coated linoleum, bringing out new life to the pattern and coloring and protecting it from scuffing and cracking, you wouldn't have to go to Alaska. Yes, but you can't shoot bear in somebody's kitchen. He doesn't shoot bear, he shoots the... McGee! <laughs> Incidentally, Molly, you'll have to give me partial credit for your house being so well kept while you were away. Why, Uncle Harlow? Asked Little Fibber, with a mischievous twinkle in his merry blue eyes, because he knew darn well what was in store for all his little radio friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I stopped by and gave Uncle Dennis a lecture on the value of Johnson's glow coat in the home. Oh. I made him set down his tray of ice cubes and really listen. <laughs> Look, Dennis, I said, Molly took great care in selecting that linoleum, and you've got to take good care of it. How, he says, putting the corkscrew back in his pocket. <laughs> With glow coat, I said. It shines as it dries in 20 minutes or less, and dirt and dust wipe right off. Well, that was the story, and now I've got to be getting along, folks. Say, I'm glad you're back. Hey, wait a minute, Harlow. I want to tell you about Alaska. It's the most wonderful... Wait a minute. Have you told anybody else about it? No, he hasn't, Mr. Wilcox. Why? Then don't tell me. You know, I can't keep a secret. <laughs> I ask for myself. Hey, Molly, there's a good place for that bear skin. Right on the floor there in front of the fireplace. Never. Huh? I'm not going to go around doing my housework with that thing showing its big, beautiful white teeth at me like Cesar Romero, and I wish it was. <laughs> I think I'll put it on the floor in front of my bed. Then on cold winter Oh, mornings... look, McGee, never mind the bearskin now. You've got to help me take down the curtains. They're going to the cleaners. Oh, let's do that tomorrow. I never saw such a man. You either work like fury for a few minutes or you sit down doing nothing. <laughs> I know. I'm a member of the sweater set. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I either sweat or set. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I says I'm a member of the sweater set. Ain't funny, McGee. <laughs> well, so what? You might have gone along with me on our first show. <laughs> well, everybody seems to know we're home again. Yes, the Johnson Wax Company asked me not to keep it confidential. Come in. Well, hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, little chum. Gildersleeve. <laughs> It's nice to see you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Won't you have a chair and a cup of tea? Uh, no, thank you, Mrs. McGee. I can't stay but a moment. I just dropped in to say goodbye. Goodbye? Where are you going? I'm not going. I've gone. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved to Summerfield. 
I'm managing the estate of my niece and nephew. Oh, well, what are you going to do with your house here, Gildy? Sell it or rent it? Sell it. Would you care to buy it as an investment? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Why, I wouldn't give you a nickel for that rat-ridden rabbit hutch, Strucky. Oh! Remember when that house had an iron deer out on the front lawn, Molly? Yes. Whatever happened to it? He looked around one day and took a look at that house and ran away. <laughs> Now, look here, McGee. I've taken plenty from you in my day, but by George... Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? I must remember to buy George, my caretaker, a little gift. <laughs> He's been taking care of my house this summer. Uh, did you meet him? No, nope, we were up in Alaska, Frocky. There's a wonderful place. I shot one of the biggest bears in... Yes, a... and how did you like it, Mrs. McGee? Oh, I had a wonderful time, Mr. Gildersleeve. The way I happened to shoot him was, I was walking around the bend to catch Can Crick, when all of a sudden... Uh, what time is it? It was early in the morning, just as the first rays of the Arctic sun were glinting on the ice... I mean, what time is it now? 3.30, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, dear. Just got time to catch my train. But I just couldn't go without coming in to say goodbye to you, Mrs. McGee. And Fibber, my little chum. You, you mean uh, we, we ain't going to see you anymore, Gilly? Oh, uh, chin up, little pal. That's life, you know. After all, we're just ships that pass in the night. I hope you miss me as much as I'm going to miss you. Well... Ships that pass in the night had better miss each other. You dear old man, I, I hardly know what to say. Well, let's just say this isn't goodbye. It's au revoir. Oh, I, I can't say that, Gilly. Why not? I can't pronounce it. <laughs> let's just say goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Oh, another thing. My lawnmower. What about your lawnmower? McGee never returned it, and I'm going to need it in Summerfield. Now, wait a minute, Gildersleeve. You know very well that ain't your own lawnmower. It is, too. You borrowed it. It was mine, and you borrowed it. What? That broken down clover clipper has changed hands oftener than the world's wrestling championship. <laughs> Can either of you prove ownership? Yes. How? It's got my initials carved on the underside of the handle. Well, if it has, it's yours, Mr. Gildersleeve. Go get it, McGee. I will not. If he wants it, let him go get it himself. All right, I will. Where is it? It's right in there. Uh, here? Yes. Okay. By George, I'll... Oh, my goodness! <laughs> McGee, aren't you ever going to straighten out that closet? <laughs> And here, back from their summer vacation, no bigger but better than ever, your favorites and ours, the King's Men, singing Little Eyes of Jane. I got a gal and you got none, Little Eyes of Jane. I got a gal and you got none, Little Eyes of Jane. Oh, Little Eyes of, Little Eyes of Jane. Oh, Little Eyes of, Little Eyes of Jane. Come, my love, and marry me. Little Eliza Jane. Jane. How happy we will be, my little Eliza Jane. I'll go buy a wedding ring. My little Eliza Jane. Jane. We'll be married in the spring, my little Eliza Jane. Oh, little Eliza, little Eliza Jane. Oh, little Eliza, little Eliza Jane. Then one day in the middle of May, little Eliza Jane. Away she ran with the traveling man who stole my Liza Jane. Oh, little Liza, when I heard the news. Oh, little Liza, I got the blues. Liza, come back, my Liza, Liza, come back, my Jane. Liza, 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 little Liza Jane. Liza Jane Had the blues so awful bad I jumped up 
up my mind and try to find my little eyes and chain. Away down south in Tennessee, I got off the train. Who was waiting there for me but little eyes and chain? Oh, little eyes, little eyes and chain. Oh, little eyes, little eyes and chain. Took my honey by the hand, got back on the train. Stole her from that traveling man, sweet, sweet Liza. Now we live in Baltimore, me and Liza Jane. Lots of chillin' round the door, just like Liza. Liza Jane. Liza, 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 howlin' on my Liza Jane. Hey, Molly. Must have been a bad storm in Whistle Vista while we were gone. What makes you think so? You know that ship in the bottle on the mantel? Yes. Well, two lifeboats are missing. <laughs> Hardly Come in. Yet. Well, if it ain't old Wallace Wimple. Hi, Wally, old man. Hello, folks. <laughs> Come right in, Mr. Wimple. It's nice to see you again. Thank you, Mrs. McGee. I hope you had just a peachy vacation. <laughs> Oh, we did, Wimple, we did. Swell trip. Went up to Alaska. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. I've been trying to persuade my wife to take a trip up there, too. <laughs> oh, you'd simply love it, Mr. Wimple. I know I would, Mrs. McGee. But she won't go unless I go along. I simply can't leave my business. <laughs> what is your business, Wimple? <laughs> I'm a poet. <laughs> oh, a poet, eh? Well, you ought to grow a beard, Wimple. Poets are more impressive with beards. I did once, but the people who buy my poetry didn't like it. Oh, to whom do you sell your poetry to? Burma Shave. <laughs> Incidentally, how is your wife, Wimple? Same as ever? Oh, yes. She had a wonderful time listening to the Lewis Nova fight on the radio last night. Oh, how did you like it? I didn't hear it. I was doing the dishes. <laughs> Wimple, what you need is a few weeks in Alaska. Make a man of you. Go up there and hunt and fish and rough it. Then come back and assert yourself. That sounds like a wonderful idea, Mr. McGee. Betcha. But do I have to come back? <laughs> Why, of course not. Maybe you wouldn't want to. Boy, if you ever saw the first rays of the sun glinting on the icy waters of Ketchikan Creek... Oh, I'm sorry. There's my wife honking for me. Coming, dear. Goodbye, now. So long, Roy. <laughs> Poor Mr. Wimple. Hmm. Say, what's his wife like, McGee? Well, roughly, like the backfield of the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate to say... <laughs> I hate to say that, loving football the way I do. <laughs> oh, well, look who's here, Molly. Hi, mister. Well. <laughs> When'd you get back? Who huh? planned you? Oh, just a little while ago, sis. My, you've grown, haven't you? Your vacation must have agreed with you. Uh, how old are you now? Hmm? I says, how old are you? <laughs> I bet you can't guess, I bet you. Mm, seven? No. Six? Mm-mm. Five? No. Eight? <laughs> no. Well, you must be more than four. You're not nine, are you? No. Well, then I give up. You didn't try five and a half. <laughs> ah, five and a half? No. <laughs> well, anyway, you're a little young to be getting coy about your age. What you been doing this summer, sis? Oh, I went to a Girl Scout camp, I bet you. I'm a brownie. Oh, you are, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, shake, sis. There's a touch of leprechaun in me, too. <laughs> Gee, it was wonderful, mister. I learned first aid and how to give Arna Pinchel reciprocation and everything. You did, eh? Hmm? I said you did, eh? Did what? Learned how to give artificial respiration. I know it. Well, if you knew it... Uh, you must have had an interesting summer, sis. We had one, too, though. Went up to Alaska. Did you? You betcha. Ah, Alaska's really marvelous. 
It's the thrill of a lifetime to be walking along on Ketchikan Creek with the first rays of the Arctic sun, glinting on the icy waters and see an Eskimo trotting along behind his dog sled, cracking his whip in the air and hollering, Mush! 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 I'm hungry. Oh, <laughs> Ever see a kid with an appetite like hers, Molly? Well, she loved growing. All little girls are like that. Mm-hmm. They love menus when they're young, and they love used men when they're old. <laughs> now will you help me take down the curtain? Mm. I'll drag him down with my teeth after that one. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Molly. I don't think I will. I, I don't feel like that. I don't feel good. What's the matter? I'm worried about my skin. Well, take a warm bath and rub a little oil on it. No, no, no. I mean my bare skin. Oh. They, those guys promised they'd send it to me just to... Come in. Hello there, kids. How's everything? <laughs> did you have a nice summer, Mr. Sure Oka? did, daughter. Hey, Molly, watch his eyes pop out when he finds out where we've been. You know where we went this summer, old-timer? No, I don't, Johnny. Personally, I went up to Alaska. <laughs> Alaska? Yep. Wonderful country. Shot a bear, too. <laughs> you you shot a bear? Yep. One of the biggest bears ever shot in Alaska. Oh, sure. Never mind about me. Where'd you kids go? Well, remind us to lend you a lightning rod when you leave, Mr. Old-timer. <laughs> Why, daughter? You just stole our thunder. <laughs> That's pretty good, daughter. Or it would be if I knew what you meant. <laughs> that ain't the way I heard it. No, no. The way I heard it, one feller says, t'other feller says, he says, this Joe Lewis is a great fighter, all right. He's practically invisible. You mean invincible, says t'other feller. I do not, says first feller. I could see him as plain as I can see you. <laughs> well, I gotta be getting along, kids. Remind me sometime, tell you about Alaska. That's a great country. <laughs> that does it. What, McGee? Sit down, Molly. I. I, there's, there's something I want to tell you. McGee, what is it? Don't look like that. You frighten me. Sit down, Molly. But what do you want to tell me, dearie? I want to tell you about my trip to Alaska. <laughs> but I was right there with you, remember? I know, but I got to tell somebody or I'll bust. Oh. All right, dearie. Go ahead. Well, thanks. Well, sir, if you ever saw the first rays of the Arctic sun... Glinting on the icy waters of Ketchikan Creek. Heavenly days up the creek again. <laughs> While we're waiting for Fibber and Molly to return, I'd like to have a moment with you to say farewell to September and hello to October. Where the months have gone, don't ask me. But what to do about that car of yours that needs an October beauty treatment? Well, I can certainly answer that one. Make it sparkle and shine with Johnson's Car New, the sensational auto polish that both cleans and wax polishes in one application. Perhaps you'd like to know that during the past season, Car New has enjoyed the greatest sales increase of its history. More and more car owners have discovered how easily, how inexpensively, they can clean and wax polish their cars this modern way. Car New saves time. Car New saves money. Where can you buy it? Ask your regular wax dealer, auto supply store, or service station for the one and only Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. Ladies and gentlemen, Molly and I and the Johnson Wax people and all of us would like to take this occasion to wish Harold Perry every success with his new Sunday afternoon program, the Great Gildersleeve. Yes, we'll miss him on Tuesday night, but we're proud that our association was a stepping stone toward his own show. And if he learned anything from me about the finer points of acting and timing and characterization... It'd be a miracle. Yes, sir. Huh? 
Good night. <laughs> Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night, and reminding you that America's first line of defense is you and your support. So invest to the best of your ability in defense savings bonds. Good night. Well, here's that man again to suggest to all you careful housekeepers that you try just one bottle of Johnson's Cream Wax, the newest form of wax polish made especially for furniture and woodwork. No oil to collect dust, cleans as it polishes, gives furniture an exquisite wax luster, real wax protection. That's the cream wax story. And by the way, dealers are now offering a tube of Johnson's Blem free with the 39-cent bottle of Johnson's Cream Wax. Blem is a marvelous blemish remover that takes off ugly white rings, stains, and scratches from furniture. Get the combination package of Johnson's Cream Wax and Blem for only 39 cents. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. Uh, uh.